Hi everyone, I'm Mike Jacoby from Point Grey. Want to build a multiple USB 3 camera application like the 16 camera demonstration? Well, in this video, I'll go over three things to look out for when connecting this many cameras. I'll touch on USB 3 bandwidth requirements, power delivery to the cameras, and triggering the cameras reliably. Now, for this video, I'm going to assume you already have some experience with setting up machine vision cameras and have played around with external triggers. If you haven't, then by all means, please stick around. And if there are any questions you have, please contact me in the links below. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's begin with bandwidth. If you need to use the full USB 3 bandwidth for each camera, you'll need a dedicated USB 3 bus for each camera. For example, the 5 megapixel Grasshopper 3 camera using Sony's Pregius IMX250 global shutter CMOS sensor pumps out a whopping 380 megabytes per second. So sharing a bus would mean you'd have to either slow down the frame rate or reduce the resolution. The latest Intel chipsets have a dedicated USB 3 bus for each USB 3 port, but I will caution some boards might still have USB 3 ports that share a bus, and it's not always easy to know this by reading the motherboard specs. You can usually tell if ports are being shared by going into the Windows Device Manager and checking. For four port USB 3 host controllers, make sure that they are PCIe 4X and that they're labeled either quad channel, quad bus, or something else that shows it has full USB 3 bandwidth per port. In this example, we're using IOI's four port host adapter. It's PCIe 4X and labeled as quad channel. The next thing I want to talk about is ensuring proper power delivery to all your cameras. The best method we recommend is to add external power to the cameras via the GPIO. This can be done by wiring up all your GPIO harnesses together and connecting a couple of external power adapters to the GPIO cabling. Please refer to your camera's manual for the GPIO pin layout. Here's an example of how we use two 40 watt power adapters to power the camera through the GPIOs. However, if you don't have external GPIO power cables, you'll need to make sure you purchase a good quality computer power supply that has high enough wattage, but pay special attention to the power ratings for the rails that you connect to the host controllers. Most power supplies max their 5 volt standby rails at 15 watts, and depending on your camera's power requirements, that may or may not be enough for all four. So check your camera's power requirements, or as I mentioned earlier, grab a pair of GPIO power adapters and power the cameras through the GPIO. All right, now that we have the cameras on and running, we'll need to trigger them. You've already wired up all your GPIO harnesses together, so now we'll want to set up one camera to output the trigger signal, while the other cameras trigger off that signal. Basically a master-slave setup, and this can be set through our software. One last step is to ensure trigger signal reliability. You'll want to pull up the trigger signal to an external power source such as our handy 3.3 volt output pin on the Grasshopper 3 camera. This step isn't really necessary if you're only using a couple of cameras, but because we're using 16, it's important that we keep the trigger signal strong and this step will ensure that. All right, to conclude, make sure each USB 3 camera has a dedicated USB 3 bus if you plan on running each camera near the bandwidth limit. Externally power your camera through the GPIO for maximum reliability, and for triggering, do a master-slave setup and pull up the signal to ensure a strong trigger signal. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are our top three tips for building a 16-camera setup. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us in the links provided below. Thanks so much for your time. Please subscribe if you can, and see you next time.